Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, and welcome to Across the Pitch, Arse and Ales debut. My name is Phil Kennedy, and I have Aaron Ayers back with me today for this brand new series. Welcome back, Aaron. It's uh, it's been a few months, and I could not be more excited to uh, to have you back in the, the fold here with Across the Pitch. How have you been? I have been great, Phil. Well, well I don't know. You know how it is in 2020, but um, no, we're, we're back in the hot seats, and um, we've got a really exciting uh, little little episode coming up, and it's going to be a series, um, and it's called, as you said, Arse and Ales. So should we, should we just explain what that's about for a little bit? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, that maybe the, the backstory would start where uh, I think it was about a month ago, I, I kind of said, you know, yeah. this show has always been one where, where we cover all of the football we can but it's also been a show that's about our favorite teams, where, of course, we do Accrington Stanley and uh, Phoenix Rising in depth. Uh, and of course, the, the story of our football friendship dates all the way back about eight years now uh, when I discovered you wearing uh, an Arsenal shirt at the pub. And that's I right. said, hey, Arsenal, I, I like them too. And uh, the rest <laughs> of is history. So I, I kind of said, you know, Aaron, we haven't done enough Arsenal coverage on the show. And then he came back to me with, yeah, how about we do a show about Arsenal and beer? And I said, oh, man, I'm going to hate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a perfect mix, really, isn't it? You know, uh, we're both Arsenal fans. We, we both met at the pub where we were drinking beers. And, yeah, we like our beers. So <laughs> it, just, it just made sense. It just all came together. Why don't we do, because nothing says like a professional podcast, where we talk about our favorite team while drinking beer. I mean, what could go wrong? Nothing says quality <laughs> podcasts like Buzz Presenters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm still recovering from my hangover after the Emory era. Oh, 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 hey, I like that. So we, we did have some alternative names, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I I think my favorite of the the ones that we threw out there was uh, Woolwich Mammoths. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, uh, the Woolwich Mammoths. Yeah, that was good. I didn't mind that. Um, what else do we had? We had Ask Kings for Trouble. Ask <laughs> trouble. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Just when, when you when you said this one, and then, then because it had the beer angle with it, I, I just don't think there there was any other choices, and I. I um, do have a, a beverage here next to me. Oh, what have we got? Yes. What is your beer? Okay. Well, well, here, here's your. You're gonna probably laugh a bit, uh, but this is actually one of my favorite beers. But oh. I, I'm not necessarily saying that that this is a beer that you're gonna go and drink in a beer testing. <laughs> I think I know what this is. <laughs> if you're you're looking for something to get the job done. Uh, you're not spending a lot of money, uh, and you're looking for something that doesn't have any kind of chemical additives or anything like that. My old standby is natural light. <laughs> now, this is to not be confused with natural ice, because the first thing is when I'll say natural light, people will be like, oh, daddy, ice, ew, because everybody... Where they were in high school, mm. their friends had a party, thought it was cool to buy natural ice because it has like 6% alcohol. But see, ice, anytime you see a beer that says ice, you just throw it away because all that means is that it's been ice brewed, which is a cheap way of getting the alcohol content, which is basically the equivalent to freezing all of your beers, unfreezing them and drinking them. No, thank you. Natural light, on the <laughs> other hand, is simply a cheaper version of Budweiser without the chemical additives. When I read the side of my can, I see ingredients, water, barley, malt, cereal, 
grains, hops, and yeast. Not one ingredient that I cannot pronounce in this fine can of beer. I I have never heard anyone ever in my entire existence actually wax lyrical about Natty Light. Sorry, mate. That's <laughs> are, are, are we trying to get sponsorship from them? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> it's a pretty bog standard beer, mate. Come on. Well, like I said, I, I mean, it, it's not something that I'm drinking for quality, but, but here's my thing. is, <laughs> is why, why am I going to spend $3 more for Bud Light when I can get the same thing for cheaper? I mean, if I'm going to drink a Bud Light, why, why not just drink a Natural Light? You, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Quantity over quality. I, I subscribe to that from time to time as well. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, you see what I'm getting at is, is if you're drinking a Bud Light in the first place, then uh, you, you're already going for quantity over quality. <laughs> so why waste the extra money out of Bud Light? I mean, it, it's literally the same product in a different can without mm. the chemical additives. Okay. Okay. All right. What's your uh, beer, Aaron? Uh, we'll, we'll get on well, to football okay. later, but I'm enjoying the <laughs> beer talk. And I, I, I'm guessing that yours maybe cost uh, a bit more per yeah. than mine. I did, I did. I've, I've gone ahead and gone for a bit of a boutique beer. Um, it is from High Wire Brewing, and they're uh, situated in North Carolina, Asheville, North Carolina. And I, I, it, it was actually the tin that I quite liked because it was, <laughs> um, you know, like those old oil tins that you get? It's actually called oh, 10W40. Yeah. Yeah, it's called 10W40, and it's painted like those old oil tins, as opposed to the Foster's oil can before anyone goes there, okay? (laughs) (laughs) And it's called um, German Cupcake, and it's an imperial stout. Uh, It's, you know, brewed with sweets, cherries, uh, it'll be interesting, coconut, vanilla, chocolate, um, and I tell you what, it's a hefty 8% in here. I'm just going to crack this open right now. <laughs> I think we can get like a Barney burp or something like that with, with this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that you had that nice yeah, when you- <laughs> yeah. that was That was gold, that sound. Well, what you need to do is pour it into a glass and count the arms for us. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what, that's an imperial stout. That does not miss. Ooh, that's a that's multi. So okay. so this is going to be a dark beer with kind of a yep. creamy head. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, it's it's got lots of coffee in there. You can taste that. It's, it's quite nice. Yeah, eight percent. I may not get through this episode. <laughs> that's a I, uh, I I tend to <laughs> like those, so I, I have a feeling that's what they, that I'll uh, I'll enjoy. But you, you know, you you may have. Had a, a craft beer is kind of something that, that you celebrate after a, a win. Right. Uh, with Arsenal's last mm. couple of results, we, we may have been more of the, the natty light mood. And <laughs> let's, let's first talk about that game against Leeds United because mm. uh, it, it was a game where uh, a stupid play really took us out of any chance of the three points. It was just a boneheaded play. It it was. It really was ugly. Um, I mean, okay, so for the two of you that haven't seen it, Nicholas Pepe shoved his face into the Leeds defender. uh, What was his name now? Um, Alioski. And basically, you just... Alioski, all right, so here's a couple of things about that, all right? He did fold like a cheap linen suit, okay? (laughs) He went down so freaking easily. Uh, and linen, by the way, that's a reference to Leeds because apparently they were big linen producers back in the day. So a cheap linen suit. Um, before <laughs> that, I mean, there, there obviously was a bit of niggling between the two before that. And, you know, that, 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 I'm, not, I'm not making any excuses. Right, one, it doesn't matter how much a player gets underneath your skin, you don't react to it. It looked like maybe something we said, you don't react to it. You're a professional player. Mm-hmm. You don't do it. You just don't go and shove your head anywhere near anyone else's head, basically. Because it's an instant red card. Doesn't matter how soft it is. It's the intent. No, don't do it. Rubbish. Yeah, especially now with the the automatic three game ban. On top of that, I, I yeah. mean, you're you're not just getting set off for that one game. And, and you know, certainly, yeah, you know, Arsenal is struggling enough in the attack to begin with. What what mm. have we gone like four hundred minutes without a goal from the run of play? Four hundred and sixty five uh, minutes, according uh, to my account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and you know, I'm I'm just looking at a few stats from this Leeds match, and neither team 
played well on offense at all. My favorite stat that I always look at first is shooting percentage. And I like to see, to me, uh, if you're shooting about 40% or better, then that tells me that, that you're getting good attempts, you're, you're being patient on offense. Arsenal, 2 of 9, 22%. Yep. Leads, 4 of 25, 16%. I, I mean, when you see numbers like that, it's not a surprise this game finished nil-nil. No, it wasn't. I honestly thought, well, I don't know. So there was a lot happening there. I've got a few more stats if you'd like, Phil. I know you're the, you're the stat king, but I've got a couple for you. <laughs> um, our goal haul is the fifth lowest in the league with nine goals in total in nine games. That's, that's pretty, pretty ordinary for an Arsenal side. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's not a good haul, especially when you consider the Arsenal sides of, of, of the ages, you know. Uh, you typically expect them to have a bit more creative flair. Oh, by the way, we're also tied with Fulham with the fifth lowest goal haul in the league. Now, think about that for one second because we scored three against Fulham. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, when, when we played Fulham in week one, I, I mean, it, it just looked like Fulham didn't even belong in the division. And, and yeah, I mean, so so since that match, six goals scored uh, in the, the nine matches since, nine, four, ten against in, uh, in, nine go- in nine games so far. So, I mean... The, the defense is playing well. And, yes. and, and so, so Aaron, I had mm. sent you a, uh, a screenshot yesterday of a gentleman on Facebook yes. who had said something along the lines of that he thinks Arteta is really just parking the bus, playing conservative mm-hmm. because he doesn't have the attacking midfielders he needs and that, that Arsenal is going to make a move in January for the attacking yeah. that they need. You know, I I kind of think that he might be on to something because clearly Arsenal, I, Jake Anderson, he, he always tells me, you know, that, that when teams play against Phoenix Rising, that uh, you see a lot of teams that are out there not trying to beat Phoenix Rising. They're mm-hmm. just trying not to lose. Right. Arsenal looks like a team that's playing not to lose. More yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, absolutely 100%. 100% spot on, Phil. Um, they are more well-drilled in defense, probably a little bit too much so, I think, because at one point during the game last week against Leeds, Right, there was uh, every single player was in or around the 18 yard box. All of them were there. Do you know what I mean? Which, sure, that certainly gives me a little bit of, uh, I don't know, it stops the heebie jeebies of the defense of, of your, especially under Unai Emery. But um, it's, it doesn't point to a lot of creativity. And here's the thing about that, right? So that will work against some teams. Okay. That will work against your teams like your Liverpools, even. And I guess it could have, and I did say going into the game, that'll probably work against Leeds, where you know, you defend and you capitalize on, on the mistakes. All right? mm-hmm. There are some teams out there that that's their freaking MO, okay? Do you know what I mean? That is what they do. They defend. So if we're coming up against Burnley, we're going to lose against Burnley playing that style. It ain't going to happen, man. It's all they're going to do is just defend and then take their chances going forward, and they're just going to park themselves on our bus. On, on, yeah, literally on our bus. And just take the shots as and when they can. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, you're you're spot on. I mean, to me, what I'm expecting in uh, in in Arsenal's next game against Burnley, I mean, Arsenal versus Burnley is going to be the equivalent of Floyd Mayweather Jr. fighting against Floyd Mayweather Jr. <laughs> yep, I see, I see what you're doing there. Eh? But I mean, look, a team like Wolves, okay, who we're playing up next in in the Premier League on Sunday. They're a team that are going to tear us apart. I just have this feeling. An exceptionally well-drilled side. Um, they have attacking uh, prowess in their team still. I mean, they did lose Jota um, to Liverpool, but even so, they, they, they do have that really uh, you know, strong attacking intent about them. And I, I have a feeling that they're just going to destroy us, honestly. They're going to pick apart that park the bus defence because that's what they do. You know, I, when I look at Wolves, they have nine goals for ten against, so they're they're actually at the exact same mm. uh, score to against uh, as Arsenal is. So I, I mean, and Jimenez has four of those goals. So I, I mean, to me, the Wolves are a team where 
you, you know, you, you've got a few guys. You've got Jimenez. You, you've got Traore. Uh, you've got Nato. But but once you you get past those top guys, they they've lost a lot of their depth. Like you said, they yeah. they lost Joda. Uh, they lost Matt Doherty in the offseason to Spurs. So I, I mean, to to me, Wolves are a team where I, I think they've taken a step back compared to where they were 18 months ago. Oh, I absolutely agree with you, Phil. But I'm saying that they're a team that's set up that will beat us. Based on the way that we're playing, I mean, that that four four two formation that we had against Leeds just didn't work. It just didn't work. Um, all right. There are some bright spots, though. Come on. Let's let's not get all negative. We're not AF, uh, TV here. You know what I mean? We're not going to be calling anyone Plando or fam. <laughs> well, we, definitely, we definitely need to look at the fact that we were missing party mm-hmm. uh, in the last match. And one thing I did want to bring up, j- just to give an idea of how effective party has been since, since he's come over. Uh, as you know, one of my other favorite stats is plus minus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, there are only two players on Arsenal's side that are on the plus side of plus minus. <laughs> one is Partey. Uh, I bet you you can't guess who the other one is. Uh, El Nenning. You got it. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> I was I going to say, he, he's a guy that, that we need to see more of. He, yeah. He, he's really impressed me man, when he's been on the pitch this year. He he really has. I'll tell you what, he has floated in and out of the club for years. Um, but since his return this year, he has really been a, a solid player. You know what? He's just got this motor in him that keeps him going throughout the game. And it's brilliant to watch. Really, really good. I mean, he may not be the most spectacular player on the pitch by any means, but he's just got that heart about him, which I rate. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that um, goes and puts pressure on uh, the wingers and and you know the defenders for the other team because Seamus you know, Keeley like, like the the other day I was having a, a discussion with with Dan Jewell who uh, who's a commentator for Accrington I follow and he said you know basically people who don't rate Seamus Keeley don't understand football because the, exactly what you're saying uh, about El Nitti he's just the guy where wherever the ball's at. He's at, he's making interceptions yep. to the midfield. Yep. Uh, and I compared it to uh, the offensive line or, or even more specifically the center position in American football where the stats, they, there's nothing that shows up on the stat sheet to quantify it. But those guys are literally the glue that holds the team together. I say the center because he's the guy that's literally handing the ball to the quarterback mm-hmm. on every play. Guys like Keneally, El Nenny, they're the guys that are handing the ball off to the guys uh, that are going to make the plays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's a good, a good analogy there, Phil. And also, I think that was missing as well. We were missing Partey. We were missing El Nenny uh, against Leeds. And you know what? <laughs> Even though you've got players like Ceballos and, and Xhaka there, they just make the difference because they've got the go forward and the will to keep going forward across the game. And that... <laughs> It's all a bit sad when you're talking about, you know, your, your center, central midfielders making a change in the game. But honestly, they're the only ones looking like actually doing anything right now. As that, what, what do you call them? Plus one, minus one? Oh, yeah, plus, plus minus. And I, I'm glad yeah. that, that you brought that up because that, that was actually what I was getting ready to talk about next. Because so, so with plus minus, uh, just for, for those not familiar with the stat, what it is is it, it's just the amount of goals your team scores while you're on the pitch minus the number of goals your team allows while you're on the pitch. So so obviously, you want to be plus. Right now, everyone on Arsenal is minus. So so for instance, uh, I'll just give an example uh, uh, where uh, Partey right now, he is a plus one, which means Arsenal has scored one more goal when he was on the pitch that they've allowed while he was on the pitch. And sadly, that's the best of the whole team. Uh, other guys are, uh, are significantly less, but the, the stat that I really like to look at is plus minus per 90 minutes. Cause sometimes a guy could play a small amount of minutes and, and get uh, you know, right. a couple pluses, things like that. But so we were talking about on plus minus per 90 minutes, Partey right now is a plus 0.39. Uh, 
Elmeni yep. is plus 0.11. Uh, yep. So those guys are the only two guys that are plus. On the negative side of things, guess who has the worst plus minus? <laughs> um, uh, uh, this doesn't take account of the goalkeeper, does it? No. Okay. Um, Luis. Nope. Our really? friend that got sent off. Pepe. Which one? Pe- Pepe. Oh, 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 oh. You Pepe. really? Oh, yeah. Okay. He li- listen to this. Eh? This is actually staggering. He is a minus one point one zero per ninety minutes. That means for every ninety minutes he's on the field, the opponents are scoring a full goal more than Arsenal. To put that in a comparison with other people, uh, for instance, like Bayern is a minus 0.26. Mm-hmm. Tierney is a minus 0.19. Uh, Lacazette is minus 0.04. Shaka is minus 0.47. Pepe is minus 1.10. He's the only guy that's over mm-hmm. minus one per that's 90. Not, that's not real good. That's not real good. I, I was surprised. Well, I can kind of understand, you know, why, well, Bellerin would be so high as well, because that's that's the right flank there, isn't it? I mean, what is that? Well, well, it, it points to one. Bellerin is right on team average because he, oh. he's actually played every minute. So actually, yeah. Bellerin and Leto are both uh, minus 0.26, which they played every single minute. Uh, Obama Yang is minus 0.26, but, but I mean, it, it's really when you start looking at the guys that haven't played every minute that, that it makes a difference. So, so basically, uh, like, like El Neni, he's played 450 minutes, uh, and he is uh, – so, so basically, he's been on for seven goals scored uh, and on for seven goals allowed. Pepe has been on for three goals scored and been on for six goals allowed. You can level criticism against Pepe. It's, it's not his main job to defend, but it is part of his job to backtrack. And he did not. Uh, well, he did a couple of times that I remember seeing Be- Bellerin uh, yelling at him for not tracking back, you know, and that's not a high enough level for Arsenal, I don't think. I, I think I finally come around, for those of you that uh, you know haven't heard our other podcast, Phil and I have had our discussions about Pepe on across the pitch, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've, I've finally come around and said, you know what? Sure, he's, he's a $72 million man. Wipe away that price tag. Just, just pretend that it, it didn't exist. Say it was $7.2 million, all right? Whatever. He's still not good enough for $7.2 million. I think he just needs to go and have a, have a year uh, down the lower league. Set him off to Derby. They could use him down in Derby, I reckon. Just get some, some grits and some gut into him and... and they bring him back up to see if his attitude changes, or at least he, you know, sort of picks up some some sort of ability, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so I, I mean that that's the whole thing is it, it has nothing to do with his salary. Where we're at the point when you have the worst plus minus on the team, it's very clear that you're hurting your team more than you're helping. The other thing is, you know, you said he he's not paid for his uh, his defense he's paid for his offense okay fine to me an elite offensive player needs to be shooting at least 40 percent he's right. seven out of 22 he's shooting 30 percent so he, he's not an elite shooter uh he's played a thousand and thirty seven minutes across all competitions two assists so he's getting an assist once every 500 minutes, which works out to four and a half games. So, I mean, if, if he's not an elite scorer, he's not an elite assist man, mm. he's not good on defense. I, I mean, what's he here for? Um, you're right. It, it's not good enough at the moment. And this is what I'm saying. You know what? <sighs> he's been here at the club a year and a half. I don't think he's just sort of gelled with the, the English game. That's what I'm saying. Knock him down. Mm-hmm. Send him out on loan. Send him out the freaking derby. <laughs> and where he will he will get chopped and he will learn how to harden up and actually play a better game. I believe. I believe. Uh, it's it's going to be one of the most expensive, expensive loans in history. I, but I'd damn. Sell, I'd sell him to Villarreal. Well, I mean, okay, that's the other thing as well. It looks like there's going to be some wholesale changes, as you mentioned before, and it looks like it's going to be 
the the attacking uh, formation in Arsenal that is going to be targeted, I think, uh, during the January transfer window. We could. I still think Pepe needs to go out on loan, but yeah, if we want to sell him to Villarreal, that's good if they want to pay the money. Cool. Like well, I, said, I mean, on. I'm just thinking Emery's there. He was the one that signed him in the first place. Right. Right. Pepe's game fits the Spanish league better than the English league. It, it just seems to be a good fit. Yeah, it probably actually fits uh, Unai Emery's setup better as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, Arteta is quite structured, probably not as much as, as Unai Emery, but uh, there seems to be more uh, emphasis put on defense that he just doesn't, doesn't fit right now under the current structure. But I, I don't know whether you heard my, my bombshell just as we, because I'm sick of talking about Pepe for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this. Well, while you're making admissions on Pepe, are you <laughs> willing to admit that Ozil is worse than Mustafi? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so, but, but, but so, so check it out here. So I, I understand Mustafi's really not playing, but okay, Ozil makes so much money He's literally at our greatest position of need. We're talking about how we're holding back the whole entire offense because we don't have a number 10. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, mate, um, I, I don't want to get drawn into the Ozil situation. <clears throat> no, because I, I honestly think that's more than uh, the player that we need. There, there is greater machinations happening in the background with Mesut Ozil. And honestly, I think right now he's just trolling Arsenal. Oh, yeah, de- definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, th- there's a whole lot. I-, I believe, and I've read a couple of really good articles, that there is more to it than, than him just not fitting um, the Arteta structure, basically. But I'm not going to go into it because I-, I feel like that will get us probably kicked off YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's... Uh... Let's talk about a match that I wasn't too excited about when I saw it on the schedule, but it's been growing on. Ah, there's a fungus among us. <laughs> <laughs> it's Europa League time, and that it means is. I'll be watching out the Spanish channel. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, you know what? I actually found out I had a CBS subscription. Uh, for those that don't know, all the European games are on CBS Extra or Plus or whatever it is, <laughs> Plus One. And uh, Univision. <laughs> and Univision. It turns out I've actually got one, Phil. I think I signed up for like Star Trek ages and ages ago and, <laughs> and I still... I, <laughs> that's an admission right there. I'm a Trekkie. Anyway. So are we the show for people who think mold is what's growing on the cheese in the back of your refrigerator? You, uh, yes. I guess this one could be for this week. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we're playing. I don't even know. Norwegian. Yeah. Mold. Molde. Uh, I, I, I don't speak Norway. Maybe someone could tell us. That'd be great. Tell us, <laughs> tell us that we're stupid and wrong. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Uh, so, so their, their leading score is Oh my, Oh my, Juan Fu. Oh, yes. Good old Oh my. Oh, oh, oh my. Oh, hi, Oh my. Oh, oh my, oh my, one flew. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that one five times fast. I don't think I, I can I, say I, it I, 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 can, I can handle this one. Magnus Wolf Ikram. Oh, that's a great name, though, isn't it? I like that. Mm, let's see. He, yeah. he sounds like he, he would be like one of those characters in the Expendables where Sylvester Stallone would be like, Magnus Ikram is coming in. <laughs> Yeah, it could be. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've got a vision in my head of what this guy looks like. Yeah, <laughs> he's got the, <laughs> the horned hats and the sheepskin wrapped around him. Yeah, brilliant. Um, anyway, back to football. This last game was was really quite entertaining. Uh, we played back on the fifth of uh, November. Uh, Arsenal, by the way, is undefeated and actually has scored quite a few goals in the Europa League. So it's not all, you know, darkness and gloom for the Arsenal team. Um, but having well, said I that, think that's another <laughs> thing to mention about Pepe, though, is some of his goals have been in the Europa League. He's not even scoring mm. in the, the Premier League. Mm, that is interesting, isn't it? Anyway, I'm done with Pepe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what happened last time um, these it's guys met Arsenal versus Maldi? It was 4-1. But uh, Maldi actually scored three goals. 
Yeah, they did. They had two own yeah. goals. Christopher Hagen scored an uh-huh. own goal just before halftime. Sheriff Sinyan in the oh, six- that's a great name minute. too, isn't it? <laughs> that's a great and name. And then uh, Pepe in the 69th. I uh, Willock, who, who has been playing in exceptional form, is in the 88th minute in that one. Willock has definitely been a bright spot, I think. Yep. Um, so has Nketiah, and so has Saka. Saka. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, again, going back to that Leeds game, I was 100% certain that Nketiah was going to get a run because he has been playing so well in Europe and for England. England! Yeah, I mean, that's, the, hell? that's the thing is so. Uh, all three of those players that you mentioned have one thing in common. Why? Well, what? Well, besides <laughs> being all English, they're, yeah, they're also all right. academy guys. Oh, right. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why they're not giving him a run. These guys love to run. They run. They're enthusiastic. They've got energy. They may not have the finesse, but well, who does at the moment for Arsenal? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and and Kenya has done exceptionally well in, in England and in Europa. And... I don't know why he just wouldn't have put him out against Leeds, who he was loaned to last year. I don't know why Arteta didn't do that. Like, that was my mind. Anyway, I'm not the freaking coach. I'm just some guy sitting here drinking my beer. Well, well, well I mean, to, to me, this is the biggest problem with the Premier League in general, and it's also why England isn't going to win a World Cup anytime soon, <laughs> is because Premier League teams will go out and spend $72 million on a foreign guy like Pepe when they have three guys in Kenya, Saka, and Willock sitting in their own damn academy that they already own. And I mm. rate all three of them better than Pepe. On current form, I absolutely agree, man. Absolutely agree. And yeah, so uh, many teams do this. I, I mean... You've got guys like like Jamie Vardy. How how many years did he play in the lower leagues and never even get a chance? It's like Premier League teams hate English players. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got me at, I don't know. English <laughs> are more more expensive than their international counterparts, but that, that, that seems to be no excuse. I don't understand that. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at an absolute fucking loss. Well, I I'm mean, a- the other thing you have to look at, though, is there's so much foreign ownership. I mean, how many Premier League teams yeah. are owned by English owners? Well, that's a good question. I'm going to have to look into that. I don't know the answer to that. Not, um, not very many. Spurs. No. Uh, uh, Southampton? Yeah, I, I mean, maybe Brighton. Uh, uh, well, Newcastle. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. <laughs> well, 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 that's, well. That, that's the that's one. Real well. The one you do it well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize to our Geordie listeners. I don't think they're uh, going to be listening I'm, I'm, to this. I'm, I'm <laughs> looking up right now. I'm sure that there's a, a list. List of, of English football club owners. Okay. Arsenal, Stan Kroenke. Uh, Villa is uh, Wesley Eden, who's an American. Uh, Nasef Suarez, I think that's an Egyptian flag. Okay, Brighton is owned by Tony Bloom, who's English. Uh, Burnley is Mike Garlic and John Basankiewicz, who is English. They're both English. Chelsea is Abramovich. Crystal Palace is co-owned by Steve mm. Parrish, who's English, but then two other Americans. Uh, Everton is Farhad Mashiri, uh, is the main owner. There are two English co-owners. Uh, Spurs are Joe Lewis and Daniel Levy, who are English. Uh, West Ham, one of their three owners. Uh, so, so basically, out of 20 Premier League teams, one, two, three, four, Four are solely owned by English, and then one, two, three, three of so so four four Premier League teams are are owned by English owners outright, and three others have partial. Uh, and it looks like they're other than Steve Parrish with Crystal Palace. Otherwise, they're minority owners. So so yeah basically 13 of the 20 have no english ownership whatsoever so what are you saying that's what's what 
Spurs play their academy players and Arsenal does it? I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you, it's treacherous territory that you're treading into there. That was some nice alliteration. Um, <laughs> just because, you know, I mean, the Premier League is an international brand. You know what I mean? It's, it's not an English brand anymore. I'm sorry. It's not. So, you know, you've got players from all around the world. It's watched all around the world. That's why so many people like Darren Woodhead or, or Johnny Hibbert, who are our hosts on our other episodes, uh, you, you know, they attend their, their local games or sure. follow, you know, Stevenage for Johnny and obviously Accrington for Darren and don't even bother watching the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I, I think, I think, I think it, the, the hardcore English football fan generally doesn't like the Premier League. Well, I think that's a bit of a generalization. I mean, sure, there's a, a, a good contingent, or there used to be at least anyway, a good contingent of overseas t- travelers and tourists watching the games for sure, but you generally can't get into Premier League games. Well, I, I mean, now, now there's obviously you've got, you know, like your hardcore Liverpool and, and Everton fans and, and things like that. But, but what I'm saying is that unless you live in London or you live in Manchester or you live in Liverpool, you, you know, if you live in Cheltenham, for instance, you, you're not near any Premier League team anywhere. Chances are you're going to be out watching the, the non leagues and things like that. Um, okay. <laughs> We're off topic here, but I know what you're talking about, and I get it, that there are uh, a bunch of hardcore fans in the lower leagues that dislike the Premier League for the way that it's being managed, the way that the, the whole EFL pyramid has been managed. They've got a point. They've got a point. But every single one of them would be lying if they said they didn't want their team in the Premier League. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've, I've debated whether I want Accrington to make it to the Premier League or not. I to me, I feel like it's one of those things that would be fun for a couple of years, but then they wouldn't be the same Accrington anymore, if that makes sense. Yes. The, the same thing like Phoenix Rising going to the MLS. It's like one of those, do you really want that? <laughs> All right, Phil, you've actually called me on my on my own comments there. Very good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I said exactly that. Yeah. I don't want to get the MLS. So. Okay. All right, shut me up then. Fine. Um, <laughs> can we can we have a couple of score predictions? Because I feel like we're uh, running close to the end of our time here. So um, are we going to see a repeat against Maldi uh, <laughs> uh, this week? Well, I mean, we're, we're away this time. And, uh, you know, I'm not thinking the weather in Norway this time of year is going to be uh, lending itself to good football. Uh, I, I remember a game last year. I, I think we were playing at like, uh, I, I want to say Ukraine about this type of year. Mm. And I think it was like oh, seven yeah. degrees Celsius at kickoff. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, it was colder than that. It was icy, I think, by the time it was, it was kickoff. It was crazy. I've got the um, moldy Norway forecast, and we're expecting light rain showers and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's four degrees Celsius. That's not very, very warm. <laughs> Ooh, four degrees Celsius. So that's what, 39 40. Fahrenheit? 40 Fahrenheit, yeah. So that's 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 going to be a fun game, I imagine. You're right. There, there's a, probably going to be a definite home ground weather advantage there. I mean, so this is, this is the, the group stage. And so, I, I mean, we've already beaten the other have have we already clinched the the advance no i don't believe so i think one more will do it yeah i believe one more will mathematically put us into okay here it is i I got it here okay okay so uh so yeah arsenal right now has nine points moldy has six points Rapid Wien has three points and Dundalk has zero. So, so yeah, so one, especially with Moldy in second, this is going to mm. be uh, a more important game. Uh, we've got a plus seven goal difference through three games, nine, four, two against. Uh, I'll go with uh, three nil gutters. 
<laughs> I tell you what, I would love to see that. Absolutely love to see it because, you know, it'll show our attacking prowess once again. I don't know if we're exactly that 3-0 team anymore. So I'm going to go with a really awful 1-0 Sturgid uh, game. Sturgid, is that the right word? <laughs> you, you gotta, you're going to go with the uh, 1-0 to the arsenal. I, <laughs> it seems like a familiar refrain at the moment, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hey, well, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, to be three points in, in that weather. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's all we're looking for is three points. So, boom, done, move on. Let's not go back to Norway this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. And then we've got Wolves on the weekend. So, it's a bit of a turnaround because we're playing Moldy on Thursday, our time, and then Arsenal plays again on Sunday. I, I would uh, expect that Obama Yang might start on the bench and, and only come in if they really need him. For Wolves? Or for no, 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 for Moldy. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I think the young guys will get a run and they'll prove yet again that they can play. Yeah, I mean, in, in the last Moldy game, uh, the, the starting lineup was Shaka, Kalesinik, Kesha, Willick, Louise. Mustafi, Pepe, Maitland Niles, Willian, Sabalos, and Leto. Now, Pepe's suspension will not affect the Europa League. It, it will not. Only the okay. League. So, so yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll see him play then because he's not going to be available for the Wolves. So, uh, I'm sure he'll be in. Uh, I mean, we we saw, like you said, Nikesha, Willock. Uh, Saka came on as a sub in the last game. Do, do we maybe see Saka instead of uh, William? Um, yeah, I believe William picked up a bit of a knock uh, okay. during that game. Yeah, that's, that's why right. he was subbed at halftime. Yeah, so I don't see William traveling. Um, yes, I do believe Saka will start this game, yes. I, I think this has been a, an excellent debut oh, episode. Uh, I wasn't done yet. Oh, I was sorry, yet. sorry. Because I, I was going to follow this up with Arsenal being back to typical Arsenal in 2020 um, by losing against Wolves <laughs> on the weekend. I do. What, I do. What's, your, what's your score prediction for the Wolves? Yeah, we should actually do that because we're not going to record again until after that one. What, yeah. What's your score pre- prediction for the Wolves? 2-0, Wolves. Where is it at? <laughs> uh, it's at Arsenal. Um, but I just, I just don't see us getting out of our current run of poor form uh, against Wolves. I, I don't see it happening. 1-1. One, one. All right, okay. Again, I was tossing out whether to go with 1-1 one, one or 2-0, but I don't see a scoring, mate. I just don't see a scoring. Well, well, here's what I'm looking at. Both teams, as we talked about, have nine goals for and ten goals allowed on the season. Uh, so both teams seem to be good for one four and one allowed each game. I'd say- so- <laughs> I'll just... company there. We are in good company there with Man U, Man City, and Wolves, and well, <laughs> Crystal Palace too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they're all sort of sitting on that same sort of record. You know, a draw would not be out of the question for this season. You're quite right, Phil. I think I might uh, change. I, mean, I would definitely. No, I'm, I'm going with two you know, I'm... I would definitely say Arsenal has been better at home than they have on the road. Yeah. Have we had a road win? Oh, yeah, we won actually, against Man U. Actually, we? you know what? They they actually they have seven points away and six points at home, but they've played really? one they've played one more game away. So they, they were they're two oh and two at home, two one and two on the road. But I, I'm gonna say the level of competition has been quite a bit higher on uh on at home, I would say, because like like one of their away wins was that Fulham game that we talked about. Uh, they did and, win uh, against Man U away, which is very impressive. Yeah, but, yeah. Liverpool and Man City. Or... Of course, they got smoked by Villa at home. So yeah, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe maybe it doesn't matter. We, I mean, with, with no crowds that. in the stands, it, it really changes a lot. This uh, yeah, you know what? You're, you're right. I think that home home field advantage really has disappeared for the most part because you don't have that sort of pressure on your back by 60 or thousand people there. But at the same time, you know, the grounds are a little bit different too. I don't know how much that plays into it, but there's certain aspects of grounds that sort of maybe one's a little bit narrower, one's got a bit deeper. I don't know. 
I could be talking out my ass here, but I don't think the, the home ground advantage really. Well, good or sore is back. Oh, good. I, you know what? I, uh, I was devastated when they cut him. I was devastated. No, I've, got, was, I've got a little Gunnosaurus here for my daughter. I mean, come on. I grew up with Gunnosaurus. That's a lie. I didn't. It was <laughs> 1996, I think. Hey, Aaron, Ooh. speaking of that, so you've got this gutter source toy. This was something I got to thinking about a few days after gutter source, the whole thing happened. I, I started thinking if they don't make back at least the mascot salary just in <laughs> merchandise sale, then it should be their merchandise people getting fired oh, and not the guy in the suit. Boom. There it is. Snap, Phil. Thank you very much. They need to be putting him front and center, right there at the front door. To be- I'd buy a gunner sword shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. I will, I will wear that every day. Yep. Well, well not every day. <laughs> I'd wear it ironically, I think, for maybe, I don't know, a, a Christmas <laughs> hey, perfect Christmas colors. So you go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> One of those ugly Christmas sweater things. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> well, Aaron, I think this has been an absolutely fantastic debut episode of Orson Ales. Did you have anything mm-hmm. else before we wrap up? Up the gunners. Up the gutters. Cheers. Good night.